Hello, my name is Su Jung Go from UMBC, and as part number three of the accessing and analyzing air quality data from geostationary satellites, today I would like to introduce air quality products from GEMS. Before we get into the presentation, I'd like to thank to the Professor Jun Kim, who is PI of GEMS and GEMS Science team for providing this data set. So the learning objectives for these sessions are to understand the air quality mission of GEMS and understand the GEMS air quality data sets, retrieval algorithms, and validation, and locate and access GEMS air quality data sets, and have sample Python Jupyter notebooks to read, map, and extract GEMS data sets. So first, um, introduction to the GEMS mission. As a historical perspective of GEMS, this figure summarizes the capabilities of satellite instruments measuring atmospheric composition using remote sensing with respect to temporal and spatial resolution. Historically, in the late uh, 1970s, uh, total ozone was measured successfully by the SVUV and the TOMS instruments. Technology has since advanced to measure important tropospheric trace gas concentrations, such as ozone, NO2, SO2, formaldehyde, and carbon monoxide, by a number of satellite sensors, including the GOM-1, 2, and OMI, Skiamaki, the OMS, and the TROPOMI. To date, uh, no observations of trace gases at high, high temporal resolution from GEO have been made to complement the high temporal resolution aerosol measurement. And a few papers discussed the importance of a GEO mission to capture the diurnal variations of air pollutant concentrations due to photochemistry, time-dependent emissions, and daily meteorological variability. So such scientific findings along with societal demands have led to projects such as GEMS, TEMPO, and Sentinel-4 aimed at providing high hourly observations of trace gas column of abundance from space. There are a series of geostationary air quality satellites, so-called geostationary air quality constellation, with GEMS over Asia beginning in 2020, followed by NASA TEMPO over North America and ESA Sentinel-4 over Europe. These missions offer similar observational capabilities, uh, such as UV visible wavelength, a similar level two products every hour during daytime and are committed to serving the data needs of air quality applications. So these missions cover the major industrialized regions of the Northern Hemisphere so that we can monitor Northern Hemisphere in an hourly basis. GEMS is a part of the future geostationary air quality constellation, which was launched in February 2020 to monitor transboundary pollution events over the Asia Pacific region hourly at high spatial and temporal resolution. It is a geostationary scanning UV visible spectrometer so that measure wavelength range from 300 to 500 nanometer, along with north to south pixel at once, and the scanning move from east to west. So the left figure here shows the field of regard and the scan profiles of gems over the domain. Following the sunrise and sunset, GEMS cover Eastern Asia from Japan to Bangkok in the morning and cover the area from Seoul to India in the afternoon. 
the spatial resolution of gems of our soul is about 3.5 kilometer by 8 kilometer for aerosol products and 7 kilometer by 8 kilometer for trace gas products. And the spatial resolution changes from 4 kilometer to the 25 kilometer depending on the location. Now this slide shows the GEMS instrument specification. Um, the left figure shows GEMS flight model uh, drawing and pictures of the calibration assembly with aperture from the very left and the radiator, which is the bottom two, two figures, uh, side view of the instrument. The GEMS instrument was designed to operate for more than 10 years, producing eight images per day. And GEMS measures radiance and irradiance for the spectral range of 300, 300 to 500 nanometer at a spectral resolution of 0 0.6 nanometer with three oversampling. For spectral and radiometric stability, the instrument was built under requirements for SNR, polarization, stray light, and so on. GEMS instrument on board the GK2B satellite uh, launched in February 2020, uh, and after that, GK2B satellite implemented solar array deployment, a liquid opposite engine firing, and arrived successfully in orbit in March 2020. In terms of GEMS instrument, GEMS powered on March 23rd after arriving orbit successfully. And outgassing and ob obtained the first GEMS measurement for Sun, Earth, and LED on April 21st in 2020. And since April 23rd, 2020, GEMS is in daily operation and providing operational data sets successfully. Now, this slide shows the details of the GEMS east-west scan operation scenario. <clears throat> the scan schedule of GEMS was designed to move the field of view from east to west during a day to spend more time measuring ground pixels with low solar zenith angle. Currently, four types of field of views are being used, including half east, half Korea, full central and full west. The tail on the left side shows different east-west scan scenario depending on time shown in columns and months in rows. So early in the morning, GEMS scans HE sector, which is marked as pink color on the table. And as the sun rises, GEMS scans area following the sun and expand to its full scan range, evolving into HK mode in yellow and FC mode in green color. FC mode takes measurements from Japan to include South Asia. In the afternoon, GEMS takes observations in FW mode in blue color to cover India. This slide shows the baseline products of GEMS, the level two products with their importance. Like Tropomi instrument, uh, GEMS provide aerosol product, including AUD, single scattering albedo, UV visible aerosol index, aerosol height, cloud product, surface properties, total ozone, ozone profile, formaldehyde, glyoxal, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, 
and UV index. For ozone profile and nitrogen dioxide products, they are separated into tropospheric and stratospheric. Currently, the blue colored data, which is aerosol, cloud, um, surface, uh, no surface, total ozone, SO2, UV index are released as of September to 2022. And additional products such as uh, H2O, ERO, uh, which is bromonoxide, and HOMO, which is called HONO, are under development. For gems here, cloud and surface products are related to climate change and proxy data of other aerosol and trace gas products. Aerosol and UV index are especially important products for public health as well as air quality. And trace gas products such as NO2 and formaldehyde are also an important components for the air quality itself especially at the surface level. And additionally, um, formaldehyde and glyoxyl are proxy of volatile organic carbon, and nitrogen dioxide are precursor of ozone and aerosol. In this chapter, I will briefly explain the GEMS Level 2 products algorithm and their validation result. So this figure shows the optical depth of air pollutants and based on the physical properties, which range of wavelength channel win window we use in retrieval. Compared to the trace gases, Aerosol has spectrally smooth signal and optical depth about over 0 0.1 um, approximately. And currently, GEMS aerosol algorithms are picking six discrete channels between 300 and 500 nanometer. For the trace gases, ozone, NO2, and SO2 has relatively high signal compared to the H CHO, which is formaldehyde, and glyoxyl in an order of 10 to 100 times in magnitude. The retrieval algorithms are picking wavelength where the trace gases optical depth signals are dominant. The general concept of retrieving level two products from satellite measurement datasets are basically the same, regardless of product type. First, we calculate the top of the atmosphere radiance using radiative transfer model, and the top of the radian top of the atmosphere radiance is a function of various available atmospheric conditions, such as geometry, surface reflectance, aerosol optical properties, and trace gases, and etc. Then, based on comparison between satellite observed top of the atmosphere radiance and calculated top of the atmosphere radiance, we retrieve GEMS level two products. Now this slide shows the flowchart of the GEMS algorithm. Once level 1C data is generated from the level 0 data, it follows the pipelines for producing surface information, cloud information, and aerosol optical properties. Then the ozone products are derived employing the level 1C and cloud data, followed by the retrievals of SO2, NO2, firm aldehyde, and glyoxal. Um, finally, the aerosol effective height and UV index products are generated.
Jim's aerosol algorithm retrieves aerosol optical depth, single scattering albedo, and aerosol layer height. Based on calculated lookup table, the algorithm first calculates UV aerosol index, visible aerosol index, to select aerosol type. And after cloud masking, the algorithm retrieve AUE, which is aerosol optical depth, and single scattering albedo, which is SSA. This algorithm is based on OMI heritage two-channel method from Omer Torres group and use optimal estimation method to retrieve aerosol layer height finally. For the optimal estimation, the algorithm uses six channels, which is 354, 388, 412, 443, 477. 490 nanometer. The right side figure shows the retrieved gems aerosol optical depth and compared with Himawari aerosol optical depth for the smoke case originated from Siberian wildfires. For this case, highly observing fine mode is selected from gems aerosol type algorithm and showed reasonable agreement with Himawari aerosol optical depth. For ozone products, the algorithm basically consists of a three-step retrieval process. Step one is a simplified version of the Dave and Meteor, uh, which is um, developed in 1967 algorithm, which is called the TOMS algorithm. The basic concept here is that for ozone retrieval, uh, Lambertian equivalent reflectors, which is R, is assumed to be wavelength independent for most cases, except when aerosols are present and where there is a strong specular reflection of the ocean surface. And after estimating the Lambertian equivalent reflectivity, the total column ozone is estimated by matching the measured radiance with the computed radiance from the radiative transfer model. The second step is a straightforward implementation of the optimal estimation algorithm developed by Rogers. The optimal estimation process is to obtain the ozone profiles at three conventional TOMS wavelengths, which is 312, 317, and 331 nanometer, where sufficient ozone information can be obtained. And in step three, we make corrections to account for the effects of clouds and terrain heights. The right figure shows the retrieved GEMS total ozone result, which remains almost the same during the daytime. So this slide shows the ozone profile algorithm. The left figure shows the flow chart of the GEMS ozone profile algorithm. And the algorithm basically used the optimal estimation. And the successful performance of algorithm can be accomplished only when accurate calibration and forward model simulations and good knowledge of measurement errors and a priori covariance matrices are available. So the bottom left figure shows the basic physics here, uh, which is that it shows the Huggins ozone bands, which is between 300 to 340 nanometer. And this has been employed to obtain information on the vertical distribution of ozone. The magnitude of ozone absorption cross-section decreases dramatically as much as five orders in wavelength range 
of 270 to 340 nanometer. And the incident light at the Hertzley band is observed mostly through the stratospheric ozone, whereas the light at longer wavelength can penetrate into the lower part of the atmosphere. And the bottom right size figure shows, uh, which is located at the central part of the slide, uh, shows the sensitivity of normalized radiance to the ozone profile as a function of wavelength. Below 310 nanometer, the peak position of the sensitivities is well discriminated for the altitudes between atmospheric top and ozone layer. The sensitivity to the tropospheric ozone can be obtained at wavelengths greater than 305 nanometer, but become weak to all layers with wavelengths greater than 330 nanometer. So the right figure shows the gems retrieved monthly mean of tropospheric column ozone uh, compared to the geoscan uh, results. This tropospheric ozone from gems shows higher values than those from geoscan in eastern China and Southeast Asia. Now I'm going to explain about the retrieval algorithm of nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and formaldehyde. The basal method of trace gas algorithms are same and composed of four different steps. First, from the spectral radiance measurements from GEMS, um, based on the DOAS method, which is number two here, the algorithm retrieves slant column density of trace gases. Here, to fit the radiance spectrum accurately, the algorithm uses absorption cross-section datasets convoluted with the slit function of instrument. Third, to convert slant column density to the vertical column density, the algorithm calculates air mass factor from the radiative transfer model. And this is based on pre-calculated lookup table and considered different atmospheric conditions such as geometry, aerosol, surface, gas profile, and cloud. With the air mass factor, the algorithm calculates vertical column density. And for nitrogen dioxide, they have stratosphere troposphere separation algorithm to get tropospheric NO2 data set. So the right side figure shows the gems retrieved NO2 total slant column density over Southeast Asia and East Asia region showing the algorithm results are well captured during, are well capturing nitrogen dioxide emission from major city areas. Thus, the SO2 um, slant column retrieval for gems is based on PCA and DOAS method. The physical concept of the PCA algorithm is similar to that of the DOAS method. And the PCA algorithm uses the pieces extracted directly from measured radiances, not the forward modeling data. The PCA algorithm for the planetary boundary layer sulfur dioxide retrieval can reduce the uncertainty caused by physically unexplainable spectral features. So the bottom figure shows 
the Tal volcano located um, about 65 kilometers south of Malina. A large-scale volcano eruption occurred on March 26, 2020, uh, 2022, and gems captured SO2 emitted from Tal volcano spreading to the Indo, um, Indochina Peninsula through the western coastal regions of the Philippines. For the form aldehyde and glyoxo, the algorithm used basic optical absorption spectroscopy, which is called BOAS method, uh, similar to the DOAS method. But the difference is that the equation is fitted to measured radiances by a nonlinear least square method. As a fitting window, Formaldehyde is wavelengths between 328.5 and 356.5 nanometer and use wavelengths from 325 to 358 nanometer as a calibration window. So the below scene shows the retrieved formaldehyde and glyosol from gems for the large wildfire cases in Ulchin and Gangneung in South Korea on March 5th in 2022. GEMS detected the increase in formaldehyde, um, glyoxo, UV aerosol index, and nitrogen dioxide emitted from the wildfire cases. The UV index algorithm is based on radiative transfer modeling <clears throat> using as inputs um, such as solar zenith angle, beam zenith angle, relative azimuth angle, total ozone, um, and etc. from GEMS level 1C and level 2 product. Second, Cloud optical depth is calculated by comparing the calculated TOA reflectance and measured TOA reflectance at 354 nm. And finally, UV index and other indices are obtained by applying four different action spectra for aerosmal effects, DNA damage, production of vitamin D in human skin and plant response from the surface UV radiation. To evaluate the accuracy of the GEMS level two products, several ground-based or satellite instruments are used and this figure shows um, the ground-based instruments network, which is used for the GEMS level 2 validation. Based on the shown ground-based or other satellite observations, we validated the GEMS level 2 products against ground-based and other satellite observations on for the period of uh, from August to October in 2020. The correlation coefficient written in red color at each panel represents the good agreement between GEMS and the reference observations. This is the same GEMS validation results as previous slide, but it shows the statistical table. The blue number represent the goal correlations, which were set before the GEMS launch. And the red indicates the achieved correlations. So for the same period from August to October in 2020, 
every part achieved a higher correlation than the goal. Now, I'm going to explain how we can access uh, the GEMS air quality data sets. After a launch of GEMS, currently all the GEMS level 2 images are available through the NIR website. And also, level 2 file products of cloud aerosol optical depth total ozone, which is O3T, UV index, and SO2 are released in June 20, 2022. Soon in November, other level two products will be released and level two data will be downloadable from NIR site uh, from the website addresses here. And for the level 1C data, um, data is available through the offline only due to the large file size of about 8 gigabytes per one hourly scan. Now, how we can access the GEMS data? First, Go to the National Institute of Environmental Research website, which is NIER website, and click the Satellite Data tab. Before we go further, if you click the Satellite tab, you can find the instrument detail and products for GEMS. If you click the image view tab, you can look up the GEMS level two image to search the image of the specific products. Or can you, you can begin by selecting the product of interest from the search bar, such as aerosol optical depth, single scattering albedo, um, total ozone, and etc. and use the temporal search options to filter the data by time and date. Then you can see the image of the field of regards of gems and the zoomed in area around the Korean Peninsula. To download the gems level two data, one can click the data download tab. And as we looked up the GEMS imagery, use the temporal search option to filter the data by time and date. And click the button of downloadable to begin downloading GEMS data. And you can download multiple files using the checkboxes. Finally, if you go to the ATBD tab, you can download the um, ATBD of GEMS level two data, which describes the principle of level two algorithm. Now, this slide shows the GEMS NetCDF4 file naming convention this is basically on order of satellite name, instrument name, data processing level, the satellite observation date, start time of GEMS observation, algorithm name, and GEMS scan area. And the final two is the processing type and file extension format. Now with the Panoply program, if you open the GEMS aerosol NetCDF file, you can see the satellite variables on your left side and the detailed file structure information on the right side. Here, the final algorithm flags 
is the variable describing quality flag of aerosol products. For the quality flag, the details of usage are described in GEMS user guide, which will be available from the um, NIR website. Now I want to show um, the Python Jupyter Notebooks exercise to read, map, and analyze GEMS datasets. If you open the um, GitHub or Google Drive for the GEMS datasets, um, there's uh, several files uh, for for the Python Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so here I've already set, set, set up the code and GEMS level to aerosol or nitrogen dioxide files and Aeronet datasets in my Google Drive. So from, so at first, if you open this readme file, um, there's a description for um, for the four Python codes, which is read and map gems NO2 and AI, read gems and list SDS, read gems NO2 AI at all location, read gems and time series with error net. So from the first, um, this read and map gems NO2 and AI um, is basically read the gems datasets and plot the basic variables on the map. The procedures are divided into four steps. First, it reads the file list and get the dataset files that are listed. And we have to choose between yes or no to generate the map figures. And then it first calculate the range of valid data to be used to be displayed in the map. Then it plot the variable of interest along with a color bar on the side based on the SDS variable chosen and the data for that variable. Second, this read gems and list SDS Python code um, basically read the file list and get the data set that are listed. And the main function of this code calls another function to print the following variables such as um, NCATTRS, which is a Python list of the NetCDF file global attributes, or NCDIMS, which is a Python list of the NetCDF file dimensions, and NCVARS, a Python list of the NetCDF file variables. Third, the read gems NO2 AI at all location code um, proceeds um, the following steps. Uh, first, it reads the file list and get the gems data set that are listed and calculate the mean, median, and standard deviation and display them on the screen and calculate a range of valid data and display the longitude and latitude. And, if, and the user should input on um, longitude and latitude that fall within the displayed range, which is from um, C. And finally, it identifies points that are closest to the user input and output the value of the closest collocation, the means of a three by three and five by five pixel square centers around the input. 
finally, the read gems and time series with Aeronet code reads the gems and Aeronet file simultaneously and find the gems pixel closest to the Aeronet site so that it finally plot the variable of interest based on the SDS variable and the data for that um, variable as a time series. So these four are Python codes that I will show you the simulations. And these NC files from here to the bottoms are gems level two products. And the final um, Final um, dot level one five file shows the Aeronet datasets over Yonsei University, which will be used in time series for plot. So as a first simulation, if we open this file with Google Collaboratory, You can see the scripts are divided into three parts. So first, I'm gonna run this first cell. Put this here. So I clear out this um, script. And as a second, I will mount my drive. Now we can see that this code is mounted at my Google Drive. And finally, we run this um, plotting code. So they are asking that, would you like to proceed this file name to plot the data set? So I will say yes. Then it shows the average of this data set, which is aerosol optical depth file. Um, and the variable here is the aerosol optical depth, of course, and standard deviation of aerosol optical depth medium value or the range of latitude or longitude in this file. And then it, it asks, it, would, you like to proceed, would you like to create a map of this data? Please enter a Y or N. So I'm going to say yes here. So it creates um, the map of final aerosol optical depth and the water is 443 nanometer. Um, if you would like to change the wavelength, you can directly change uh, the number here from zero to two. So number zero is 380, 354 nanometer and number one is of cross num number one corresponds to the 443 nanometer and number two corresponds to the 500 nanometer. And for the nitrogen dioxide file, would you like to proceed? So I'm gonna say yes again. It shows the average of this data standard deviation, median, and range of latitude and longitude in this file. And to create the map, I'm gonna put Y again. So we created the plot of 
column amount of nitrogen dioxide. And if you look at the Google Drive, we can see that the generated plugs are automatically saved as a PNG file. Next, I'm going to simulate uh, the read gems and list SDS code. So, as the same procedure, I run cell from the first to install the next idea. and then mount this code to my Google Drive. And third, this function um, is a subroutine that used in the main Python codes. But for the Python, you should um, run, run this cell first. So I'm going to run this cell first. And If I run the final cell, now the Python code starts, would you like to proceed with this aerosol optical depth file? So I'm gonna put yes here. So it prints all the global attri attributes, dimension information, and variable information of this file. And for the nitrogen dioxide, if I put yes here again, Uh, same, it shows the global attributes, dimension information, and variable information um, of the nitrogen dioxide file. Third, I'm going to simulate this read tropomy NO2 at all location um, Python code. Install the NetCDF for mount this code to my Google Drive. And finally, if I run the main code, it asks uh, me that, would you like to proceed this file? So I say yes. Then it shows that this is on James, this is James aerosol file. And, and the average of the aerosol optical de depths, standard deviation of aerosol optical depths, median, it also shows the latitude and longitude in this file. So if I enter the latitude and longitude of Seoul, which is the capital city in South Korea, it, automati it automatically calculates the nearest pixel of your entered location and also um, it calculates the average median standard deviation of three by three grid or five by five grid centered at your entered location. For NO2 file, the procedure is the same. So I'm going to skip at this point. And finally, I'm going to show you the read gems and time series with ARNET code.
Um, as previously, we first start with installing the CDF for a library. Mount this code to my Google Drive. And if I run the code, we can see the time series of errors optical depths over Yonsei University. Um, so here the blue points is the ARONET data set, uh, and the orange point is the GENS data set over Yonsei University. It is temporarily and uh, spatial, spatially collocated. So you can use this data sets over other ARONET sites if you change the ARONET files and the longitude latitude of um, this code. So that's all I have for the Python Jupyter Notebook simulation. Um, thank you for your um, attention and I'm gonna take any questions. Hello everyone. Uh, we will now move on to the question and answer uh, part of today's training. So uh, beginning with question one, uh, regarding the various spatial resolutions in different latitudes, are the final products resampled to a grid with unique grid size or not? Uh, Dr. Go? Yes, um, can you hear me well? <clears throat> yes. Yes, uh, so no, uh, no, James level two products are not resampled, resampled to a grid with a unique grid size. Uh, but in the future, we are going to provide the GEMS level three or GEMS level four products, which will be um, resampled to a unique grid size. Okay, question two is I couldn't open your provided GEMS NetCDF data on ArcGIS using the multidimensional tool NetCDF to raster layer. Please let me know the possible solution. <clears throat> yes, so for this one, uh, in this training, we have shown that how, how we can open the GEMS NetCDF data sets with the Panoply tool to browse the image or the variables, or we have, we have, um, we have shown the how we can read the GEMS level two data sets with Python code. So I think either way will help to analyze the GEMS data sets instead of the um, ArcGIS uh, multidimensional tool. <clears throat> Okay, moving to question three. Does the PCA method stand for principal component analysis? Yeah, yes, that's true. Um, PCA stands for the principal component analysis method, yeah. For question four, since level one C data is available only offline, how do you get a copy? Um, currently, um, because of the large data sets, we are only providing the GEMS level 1C data sets based upon the request um, through offline. So if you, uh, I, I, ha I have wrote down the, um, I, ha <clears throat> I have written down the uh, point of context of the NIR to get the GEMS level 1C data sets. So if you send an email to this point of contact ad address, email address, you can get the copy of the GEMS level 1C data sets through, through the um, hard drive, yeah. Okay, question five. Can GEMS be used to measure pollution events in Africa? Uh, no. Um, GEMS, uh, as shown before, our GEMS measurement covers only the Asia Pacific regions, but it's the geostationary um, from Japan to India hourly. So the longitude range is about 75 degrees east to the 145 degree east and the latitude range from about zero degree north to the 60 degree north. <clears throat> Question six, can we access GEMS products on the 
uh, the GEE or uh, I see Google Earth Engine platform in the near future? Um, <clears throat> I don't know why it's specifically the Google Earth Engine, but current, currently um, we do not have um, any plan for that to provide GEMS data sets through the other platforms other than NIR homepage. Yeah, that's the um, current um, situation. <clears throat> Question seven. Hi, that was very interesting. I would love to be able to play with some of the Python examples you demonstrated. How can we get access? Um, for this one, um, I think Pawan may give a better answer than me. Um, uh, we're going to provide this Python um, code through NASA RSET GitHub. Um, so the code will be available through through open access. Um, so yeah, so it's gonna be open access and will be available very soon through the NASA GitHub. <clears throat> uh, Pawan, do you have any additional answer to add for this one? I think after the training, we, we can perhaps add uh, more information on this one. Sure. Um, so for now, uh, let's move to question eight. How can we download PM 2.5 data from NESC for a particular region over India? I want to download the PM 2.5 data for the last 10 years. How can I do that? Um, <clears throat> so the does the NESC stands for the NIR homepage or can I ask what the NI NESC stands for? Um, perhaps if someone whoever asked the question wants to add the additional information in the in the question that would be helpful. But, but oh, I, 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 ha I have read the question again and the down download the PM 2.5 data for less last 10 years. Um, um, James, James has launched in 2020, February. So for the PM 2.5, we, we um, I, I know that there's a project that are creating um, the T PM 2.5 data sets from James, but, but um, you know, the James has launched in 2020, so it's definitely not possible to provide the data set um, for less 10 years. For 10 years, I would rec recommend to um, look up other data sets such as MODIS or um, OMI, not not OMI. Um, I, I would recommend to uh, take a look at the MODIS data sets for this one um, instead of GEMS because GEMS has launched in 2020. I hope that answered to, to your question. For question nine. How can we convert the AOD data to an Excel file? Um, Excel file. <clears throat> we we are currently providing the um, Python code to read the gems level two data sets. And if you um, save those uh, variables into a text file, um, then you will be definitely able to uh, read those data sets through Excel file. Yeah. Question 10. Is the NO2 plot for tropospheric or for the total column? Uh, we are providing, uh, the plot itself was the total column, but we are also providing the tropospheric um, column amounts in the NESCDF of the NO2 products. 
Yeah, so if you just change the name of the uh, variables in the code, you can definitely plot the tropospheric amount too. For question 11, are the data freely available and open access in the sense we can use it for any purpose similar to the Copernicus program? Is there a specific license type that they come with or need to credit when publishing the data? Um, I have to uh, check it with the NIER people again, but as I understand, um, the, currently the data is freely available and open access as you show, as you've seen um, through the RSA training slides through the NIER homepage. Um, <clears throat> I know the um, the data distribution system is not exactly identical to the Copernicus program, but um, the data is uh, open, currently open access, I mean, at least for the level two data sets. And I need to check with the NIR about the license type um, when publishing the data sets. So I'll, I'll get additional or answer to I, I, I mean, I'll ask to the NIR person to answer this question again. Um, yeah, so currently that's the only answer that I can say, yeah. Okay, it looks like we have a couple more questions. Uh, question 12, what is the expected resolution of the GEMS products in Southeast Asia? Yes, uh, that's a good question. If you go to the slide six of the RC training um, presentation slide, um, there's an approximate resolution. Um, um, <clears throat> so for the Southeast Asia, um, it's going to be about <clears throat> Um, five kilometer by um, five kilometer approximately. Like uh, it's almost close to the gym's um, center, line of sight center. Yeah, and the resolution would be better for the southern part, and will be a little bit, little bit, just a little bit worse to the northern part. Yeah. <clears throat> For question 13, do you have an estimation on when the user guide will be available on the NIER website? Our current plan is to distribute the user guide um, early next year. Um, we are currently working on that to finalize um, the, um, the user manual guide. Yeah. However, the plan may be changed. So this is an approximate, um, I mean, the anticipated plan, yeah. Question 14. On the slide with the regional data collection, it indicated that certain areas were only monitored during part of the year. Why is that? And during those periods when, for example, FW data isn't collected, is the satellite monitoring a different area? Uh, <clears throat> so I think this question is asking um, that raising a question that why the scan profile of gems change each hour and, and seasonally um, and hourly, right? Um, yes, I think I think the the question is asking those points. So so gems actually gems measure the backscattered solar um, radiance 
Uh, for that reason, we need we need an enough sunlight, um, backscattered sunlight, to get the enough signal for the data sets. Gems, I mean the level one B data sets. So for that reason, um, in, you know the you know the uh, solar zenith angle change over different area with different season. For that reason, uh, the gems scan profile change um, uh, <clears throat> change seasonally. Yes. So, so I think this that's gonna be the um, proper answer for this question. Question 15 is, what is the best way to estimate or measure the uncertainties of the data set for PM 2.5 and other data? Is it possible to know the interferences with our data? Um, <clears throat> so the answer for this question is, I do not understand what, what do you mean about the interference with our data. Mm -hmm. um, but for the uncertainty of the data sets for PM 2.5 or other data sets, um, um, the products such as like OZO or um, and also they are they are providing the um, uncertainty variables in their NetCDF files. So I hope that um, helps to analyze for for your research. And currently, uh, the PM two point five is not the official products of the gems. So. Um, I do not have a specific answer to to calculate to measure the uncertainty of the PM two point five, but in general, um, in general, um, you know, the uncertainty is the standard deviation of um, the specific variable. So, um, in generally, I would recommend to estimate the uncertainty based on based on those. Um, Variables. Other than that, um, other than that, <clears throat> I think this is gonna be the answer that I can give you. Yeah. For question sixteen, since there is a severe problem that such advanced research studies, like investigating air quality in the developing world, such as Africa, are minimal or non-existent. For example, how can such a study be conducted in my country? I'm available to be part of the study when I get support and partnership. Um, I think we might need to some time to think that one over. So maybe we can move on for now to um, question 17. Okay. Um, 17, question 17, do you or will you have the tropospheric ozone monitor in the GEMS website? Um, currently, we are providing the tropospheric ozone in the ozone profile um, NetCDF file. So you can look up those images um, if you open or read the ozone profile um, NetCDF file data set. Yeah. For question 18. Are there any references for GEMS level 1B radiance or irradiance? Um, if you, is, if, if you, uh, is, is this reference means that the user guide for the GEMS level 1B data sets? Um, for the GEMS level 1B user, if you, if you mean that the user guide of GEMS level 1B, um, we are currently working on that with the GEMS Level 2 user guide, and it's going to be available probably early next year. Uh, 
Yes, currently on the website, we do not have a specific document for this one yet. Question 19. Is there any option to select longitude and latitude range for downloading the data, or do we have to download it for the whole globe? <clears throat> um, again, GEMS data sets, GEMS do not measure the globe, global data sets. It only measure the um, Asia Pacific region hourly because it's the geostationary Earth orbit satellites. And for the image, uh, if you want to look, if you want to browse the image over the, through the NIR website, you can select the longitude and latitude range. But other than that, if you want to download the data sets, uh, there's, there's no option for that. You can, you can just get the whole uh, data set, hourly data sets, uh, but, but their scan profile, but which scan profile change hourly and seasonally. And you can check those scan profile um, through the title of the NetCDF file. Yeah. So question 20, does RH, humidity, affect or interfere with the measured values? Is there other interferences so we can consider them in our study? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, yes, maybe like products such as aerosol pickle death um, or other trace gases may be interfered by um, humidity definitely, but Currently, GEMS do not have a product related to the humidity. So um, for GEMS, we do not have a product for that. But for the NASA product, I would recommend to look up other humidity data sets uh, from like Maya data sets or other, other instruments uh, that providing the relative humidity data sets so that you can analyze uh, those data sets. Um, to your study, yeah. In short, you, um, GEMS do not have um, humidity-related products. Question 21. Any thoughts on adding a time dimension to or global attribute to the NetCDF files? Uh, <clears throat> or for the time dimension, if you no, we, we do not have any plan to adding a specific time variable, but if you uh, ask this question because of the validation, um, you know, James is providing the hourly data sets. So for the trace cases like such as ozone, um, I'm pretty sure that you do not have any problem on validation um, because ozone does not change uh, dramatically in an hour. Uh, also, for the aerosol products, um, I'm pretty sure that you do not have specific problem on validation uh, because it provides gen gens measure um, hourly, uh, just provide hourly data sets. So if you make a um, validation and if you have to get a temporal uh, collocation, um, you just set set the temporal uh, collocation criteria like plus or minus 30 minutes. So, uh, because it's an hourly measurement data set. So in short, uh, we do not have a plan to add a time dimension and 
I guess it's, it, it's, it's not gonna affect your valuation results. Question 22. In the presentation, you mentioned different references to validate the GEMS Level 2 product. Were the same references used to validate GEMS Level 1 products? No. GEMS, uh, the validation of GEMS Level 1 products is more complicated than the GEMS Level 2 products. And to give you more information, we are currently joining the um, several different um, international working groups such as wheels or um, other other vali calibration validation group to to make make a better gems level one b um, data sets Uh, the the answer is not the is not to make make the gems level one B validation easier. Is to improve the gems level one B data sets. I mean, in accurate way. Uh, question 23, can we plot the data on Unix AIX based softwares, e.g. grads? I'm not, I'm not an expert on grads, but I have tested my Python code through the Linux system. So I guess it will definitely work if you can read or plot the SCDF file. And I hope that answered to your question. Yeah. Question 24 is a question on data latency. How frequently will the GEMS product be updated and available for users to access after GEMS captures the image? Currently, the GEMS products are being updated every day uh, through through the NIR websites. So I guess the answer will be daily, <laughs> Upda available daily, <laughs> every day. Question 25, does NIER or another organization plan to provide an in-depth training on the GEMS data, either remotely or on-site in the future? No, we do not have an official plan for that. Okay, I don't see any more questions. So thank you everyone uh, for coming. Uh, this concludes our RSET training. And just a reminder to everyone that there will not be a homework assignment for this training. <laughs>